वंस अगेन वेलकम टू आवर ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फ्रॉम एच एम टी और फर्स्ट क्लास इज ऑन पी आई डी कंट्रोल पार्ट वन आई एम वेंकटेशन डायरेक्टर ऑफ अकेडमिक्स फॉर एच एम टी तो द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर दिस क्लास विल बी we look at uh, the principles behind error based control we look at the differences between proportional integral and uh, derivative control and we look at some of the applications of these control actions in industrial uh, situations we will look at uh, some of the practical steps in tuning these uh, controllers but like i said in the beginning this is this is only first part the second part will continue on to uh, the further parts about uh, uh, tuning and uh, combinations of these controls where we have proportional plus integral proportional plus derivative and pid so the first class is about introduction to error based control and we look at what is proportional and what is integral and why these are uh, required for uh, any engineer the priority in control should be like this especially for uh, engineers on board that your foremost priority should be uh, safety safety of personnel that please ensure that the equipment on board vessel do not cause injury to people or or death failure of equipment failure of automation should not result in uh, in accidents there have been uh, many many cases on board vessels and even on land where uh, automation failure or system failure has caused accidents on board second priority will be the safety of the vessel and environment now there are again cases we can give many examples where because the main engine failed at a critical time the vessel ran aground and then uh, there was a pollution incident many of the oil tanker pollution incident serious incidents in oil tankers many of them have happened because of failure many of you remember the steering gear failure of tamoko um, cadis which led to the spillage of a very large amount of oil then we look at uh, loss prevention in 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 the commercial sense that there should be no failure of your vessel where where the vessel goes off air or there is a there is a loss of money because of failure in automation and take care of your equipment too the simple principle is that engineer cannot by own self cannot ensure the safety of the plant that is why automation and safety systems are provided and our first and foremost priority for any engineer is to make sure the safety systems work and the automation works so that machinery is kept safe very very simple example is you just look at the you know your main engine is protected by um low low oil pressure shutdown just look at the cost of the low low oil shutdown system that is a low oil switch and the cost of its failure suppose the uh, low low oil trip doesn't do its job and you have a situation where your main bearings and and all the main engine's bearings are uh, damaged or the crankshaft is damaged then what will be the result of the loss what will be the loss so uh, very very important equipment very expensive equipment are protected by uh, very simple and limited uh, automation systems and simple systems so start with that first then 
we look at what is the meaning of uh, control in industrial applications. Simple principle is that every kind of process will have some variable which need to be maintained. And this, this has, they have to be maintained at, uh, at particular values. So the variable which needs to be maintained is called control variable. So the word control variable means it, it requires controlling. It is capable of changing, so we need to control it. And these variables have to be maintained at a particular value that is called as desired value. So if you take an example of a, a boiler steam pressure control, pressure of steam is, is a control variable. And to say that I need to maintain at 16 bar or 7 bar, 16 bar becomes a, a desired value. So control variable must be maintained at a desired value. What is the actual value, value, of the, uh, value of the variable at any given time? We call that as the current value, the real value of this variable. So what is your current steam pressure? If it is 15 bar, then 15 bar is the current value. Since we use instruments for measuring it, the current value is called measured value. We use instruments to measure this value. So then we call 15 bar as a measured value. Now the issue is, purpose of any control is you want to keep the measured value as close to the desired value. How close you need to keep depends on the type of application. So if 16 bar is the steam pressure required for the boiler, I need to keep the steam pressure as close to 16 bar as possible or as required. That is the purpose of control. So all, all types of control even in human relations, all type of control starts with something called desired value. And there is something called current value. The difference between the current value and the desired value is called as the deviation. So deviation is the difference between what you want to achieve and where you are right now. So this principle is not only for control, it applies everywhere. So, so if, if I want to keep my weight at uh, 65 kilogram, my current weight is 70 kilogram, then I've got a deviation of 5 kilograms. It's a deviation. Now, what do you do once the deviation is formed? Deviation has to be turned into uh, a controller output. That... So we say the deviation is acted on or, or changed by control action to produce an out controller output. And the controller output will go to a correcting unit. The correcting unit will change one more variable in the process. So that variable which is changed in the process is called corrected variable. So, so you so you take an example of uh, maintain viscosity, maintaining viscosity in, in fuel, uh, in, in your main engine fuel oil system. So if you, if you want to maintain the viscosity of fuel in the system, viscosity is the controlled variable. We say 12 CST is the desired value. Then you measure the actual current value of uh, viscosity generate the deviation and you produce an output. Now this output has to go to a steam heating valve. So as, as the valve opens more or less, the flow of steam into the heater changes. So as the flow of steam into the heater changes, the viscosity of the fuel is changed. So what is the corrected variable here? Controlled variable is the viscosity. Corrected variable is the steam flow in the heater. That is how the whole system works. So if you, if you look at it, it is, it is by the same principle of you measure something, you compare with what you want to achieve, find out the deviation, take corrective action. And then you go on measuring. 
measure again and go on. So if, if this measure, compare, correct, and measure again, if all these steps are there, then this is called as a closed loop control. This is again, not only in engineering, in any kind of management or any kind of activity, the result of your action has to be checked. You do something and you have to find out what will be the result of that action. So that finding out the result, we normally call as feedback. Do something, go and check whether what I've done is enough, too much, too less. Once feedback comes back into the system, we say the, the loop is closed. And then closed loop control continues this cycle again and again. Measure, compare, correct, and then measure again. So in, in most common feedback control or, or closed loop control, repeated measurement is called uh, feedback. So we say you measure once, correct. After correction, again measure. That repeated measurement is called uh, feedback. Is feedback. This shows uh, closed loop uh, control. And this is a simple diagram. This is a system. This process can be of anything. It can be of uh, a main engine running. It can be of a boiler. It can be of steering gear. So in, in, in your main engine, let us say jacket pulling water, uh, temperature control is there. Then the temperature of jacket water is, is measured here. It is measured through this uh, transmitter. And through this transmitter, it is measured. Then the measured value is sent. Measured value is sent to this control station. And there, here, the set point is there. The set point is set by how much you want. This is the set point. So the difference between the measured value here and the set point or the desired value here becomes a deviation here. And this deviation goes to the controller and the controller produces an output. This output will go to the correcting unit. And the correcting unit produces a correction. So in the case of jacket cooling water system, temperature is measured, which could be 85, 84 degrees. We want to maintain 85 degrees. So there is a deviation of one degree. That one degree deviation goes to the controller. The controller generates an output. And in the jacket cooling water system, since you want to raise the temperature, bypass to the cooler will be opened a little bit more. So opening the bypass by a little bit more is the correction. And this process continues on and on. Now, control is not only in, uh, in engineering. It is there in every form of life. It is there in every form of life and the most sophisticated uh, control systems are there in, 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 in biology, in, in human life, the life of any animal also. Even what is going on right now with the, with the coronavirus. So if, if, if your body gets infected, the system will react. System will react. And it produces the antibodies to bring it back to normal. If you look at vision, how, how the human eye works, all of you would have learned in, in school that uh, in the focus focusing of the image in your in your retina is done by the 
by the curvature of your uh, the lens so so when when somebody looks at a nearby image and then at a further image the first image will not be clear but the brain is capable of recognizing that the image is not clear and it takes a corrective action to adjust the focal focus of the lens and all this happens in in such a short time that we are not even aware so this kind of closed loop control exists everywhere but our concentration is on the engineering system so the steering gear of your vessel is this is a block diagram to show how the steering gear of your vessel will be uh, uh, steering gear control will be operating so you can see the desired angle what is to be uh, what is to be achieved is given in the autopilot Act, the actual course maintained by the vessel is given this way to the gyro compass and these two are compared that is value is compared uh, generate error is generated the v here stands for voltage that the two values are compared in terms of voltage and the the deviation is turned into an output of the autopilot controller and that will go to the steering gear control where we'll say take the rudder to so many degrees so the first loop which is outer loop is for maintaining course the inner loop which you see here is for maintaining rudder angle so the so if if i want if i want the vessel to go starboard the rudder will be turned to starboard and for that this desired rudder angle will come and once the desired rudder angle is brought the steering gear holds it in that position so there are two loops here this loop is for this loop the internal one is for rudder angle and the outer loop is for vessel's uh, heading these show the different uh, disturbances which will come into the system so the purpose of the control is to manage this that even with the disturbance coming in the course of the vessel is uh, maintained that is the meaning of this then we also have open loop control open loop control lacks repeated measurement of the variable that what are we supposed to be uh, controlling is not measured again and again so how can you have control without repeated measurement you have a clear example with the traffic light this automated traffic light is a clear example of how to do uh, open loop control so the purpose of traffic light is to con is to manage the flow of traffic that there is not uh, excessive delay at any at any traffic junction but the tra the automatic traffic light signal does not measure the traffic flow instead it operates by a uh, set time basis that that uh, the red light comes on for so many seconds the green light comes on for so many seconds so what is actually control is not being measured then if the if the same a uh, traffic light was operated by a, a policeman if a policeman stands at the junction and operates the traffic light then it becomes so slow so without the policeman if you go only by time it is called as open loop control so what are the other examples of this so you have defrosting control of cold rooms so the defrosting control doesn't check whether frost is built up in the evaporator coils 
at a at particular time, maybe uh, once every 24 hours, this defrosting is taking place. Similarly, when the purifier is uh, desludging, the desludging of the purifier is also a is also an example of uh, open loop control when when at every three hours interval or every four hour interval goes into desludging mode. We have backflush filters in, in lube oil systems and in uh, fuel oil systems. Backflush filter has got two modes of operation. When, when, it is, when it goes into backflush mode based on time, then you can call it as open loop because the actual condition of the filter is not checked when it is triggered by time. But when it is triggered by uh, a differential pressure, which, is, which you measure across the filter, you measure the differential pressure. And then if it is the back pressing is triggered by uh, initiated, then that is called as closed loop. So the same uh, mechanism or the same device can, can have open loop as well as uh, closed control. Now the deviation the deviation which is generated is put through different types of control action. And these are the various types of control action. One is called on-off control. Now, second uh, example of on-off control is uh, the air compressor cutting in and cutting out. Now, when, when the pressure in the air bottle drops, compressor starts. And as the compressor keeps running, the pressure keeps building up. And once the pressure reaches a, a required value, the compressor will stop. So in every kind of, uh, the, the issue with maintaining air pressure this way is that compared to the outflow of the, compared to the outflow of air from the air bottle, the air coming into the air bottle from the compressor will not be matching. There is, they are not at the same rate. It will not be possible to maintain the air bottle pressure at an exact value. But as long as you are okay with air bottle pressure should be between 20 bar to 28 bar, something like that. If you are okay with that, then this is an easy type of system to use. One of the requirements of any kind of open loop system is it should have capacity or, or, or a large volume is required in the example of uh, the air compressor. If the air bottle size is insufficient, then the compressor will keep cutting in, cutting out frequently. So you need to put a large compressor for that. So where, when can we use open loop control? Number one, when the control variable doesn't have to be maintained at exact values, a, a range of values acceptable, then on-off control is all right. But on-off control always means input and output will not match. So that creates disturbances in system. And in many such many applications, on-off will not be uh, sufficient. Other examples of on-off control is the filling of settling tank in your fuel oil systems or maintaining temperature of uh, cold rooms. Maintaining temperature of uh, cold rooms. So cold room temperature control is a is another example of uh, uh, on-off control. But to overcome the difficulties of on-off control, we move on to modulating control. In modulating control, as error changes, uh, correction will take place. There are 
three main types of modulating control. One is proportional, other is integral, and the third is uh, derivative. Proportional control is like this. The output of the controller will be proportional to the deviation. It is written this way. Output is equal to proportional gain into uh, error. We can use proportional gain or proportional band. Either way to describe proportional action. Proportional band is defined as it's a percentage change in controlled variable which will create 100% change in controller output. So in, the, in, the, in, this, in this screen on the right side, you can see the comparison of gain and band. So for all the diagrams, the, uh, the common part is output changes by 100%. So if you take boiler water level as an example again, feed valve opening from fully shut to fully open condition, will be 100% change in output. Feed, feed valve goes from fully shut to fully open. That is 100% change in output. Then change in water level is shown here. So, so water level of a boiler will be measured by, um, uh, for example, a DP cell. The DP cell will have... Uh, uh, VRB, sir. Uh, sir, can you please uh, share your screen, sir? We can't, we can't see the screen. Yeah, one second. Yeah, thank you, sir. Is it okay now? Yes, yeah. sir, now can see. Okay. So can you go back from the previous slide, sir? Just so that we don't miss out. All right, so, so the, what I was doing was that modulating control comes in three parts. Proportional, integral, and uh, derivative. We'll be looking at each of them one by one. So proportional control is output of the controller is proportional to deviation. Output is equal to gain multiplied by deviation. And KP is called as a proportional gain. In addition to proportional gain, or, or, or uh, apart from having a setting called proportional gain, controllers can often have a setting called proportional band. The difference between gain and band is uh, one is the inverse of the other. So a large band means uh, a low gain. The definition of proportional band is it is a percentage change in the controlled variable to cause 100% change in controller output. So you take water level of boiler as an example, water level control of boiler as an example. Output level, output changing by 100% means here the feed valve is fully closed and here the feed valve will be fully open. So 100% change in output means feed valve going from fully open to fully shut condition. The change in input means the change in water level. So water level is measured by a uh, DP transmitter which can produce a 4 to 20 milliampere signal. So between 0 to 100 percent change, if for the same change in water level, if here the water, uh, water level is uh, low or high, for example, it will be high and the feed valve is fully shut. And here the water level is low, then the feed valve will be fully open. So 100 percent change in water level produces 100 percent change in uh, feed valve opening. If I change the uh, proportional band to 50%, that means even 50% change in water level can make the feed valve to open by 100%. So that is the meaning as the band is reduced, gain will be more. And the other way around, if, if uh, gain is uh, reduced, it means the band is more. One of the principles of uh, or, or issues with proportional control is there will be always something called an offset. Offset is defined as a steady state uh, deviation. And the equation, is, when you look at the equation of proportional control, it makes it clear. This is the output of the proportional controller. This is the gain. And this is the uh, deviation. So here, if you see, if the deviation itself turns to zero, then output also becomes zero. 
So zero deviation means zero output in proportional control. So you look at examples where you look at any application where um, you look you look at applications where with the process uh, the controller on on the plant on load the controller output cannot become zero for example if your if your main engine is running you cannot fully close the steam valve for heating or you cannot fully bypass the cooler so when the plant is on then load must be there so in that case if you use uh, proportional control it will mean deviation also will be there so you take an example with the boiler on load steam will be flowing out feed water must be flowing in then the feed valve must be open and to get the feed valve to be open the issue with uh, the issue with this control is deviation has to persist so you will always get water level at a lower values so it's not that water level will not become steady but it will be at a lower value so as the load on the boiler increases the water level will go down and it will stay down and when the load increases the offset also will uh, will increase that is the main issue with this proportional control there are different ways of handling proportional control uh, we are sir uh, one participant has got a doubt sir vinod kumar i will take it after i finish okay sir okay all right okay so so this uh, this uh, effect of proportional gain effect of proportional gain is if if the proportional gain value is less that means the band is more this part we already explained if the proportional gain is uh, high it means band is less low gain system means uh, control will be sluggish and there will be a large offset if you have high gain the control will be more sensitive but it, it can result in hunting so you can see on this side here the load is changing the load is changing like this there is a sudden increase in demand then you can imagine water level goes down it goes down it recovers it settles down but it settles down at a lower value so this gap will be the offset and this is happening because the gain is uh, less the same system if i increase the proportional gain you will still get an offset but the offset value becomes less now the offset is lower and i increase the gain some more the offset becomes even lower but if the gain is excessive then it can result in uh, a lot of hunting so the uh, with the low with low gain you will get control which is sluggish and with high gain you will get control which is with high gain you will get sensitive control but it can cause hunting and high gain also will mean there will be a small uh, offset then how what are the different ways you can handle offset one way of handling offset is like this that i keep a set point that even with the maximum offset the value will be acceptable so you take an example of water level control again so this is a this is a this is the boiler drum then i keep a water level set point here this will be the desired value i want the water level here then as the load increases on the boiler with let us say 20% load it will be maintaining here with 50% load may be here then even with 100% load it can at the most go down to this level so this means even with maximum load and maximum offset the process value in this case the process value is the water level i am keeping the water level at a uh, acceptable value so this is one way of handling second way of handling is you keep changing the set point when the load changes so in this example you can see the load is changing load change increased the water level came down 
and it's settling down here. This much offset is there. But if I want to bring the water level back to where I want, then one way of doing is change the set point. To increase the water level to a desired value of water level to this point, then the actual value of water level reaches here. So you will notice that offset is not gone. Here also you get offset. Offset is still there, but the water level is where you where you want it to be. So the issue is proportional control will definitely have this uh, difficulty called offset, but there are different ways of handling it. But if the load is load change is not predictable, if it keeps on changing frequently, then this will not work. This method of changing the set point will not work. In that case, it is better to opt for integral control. So the main purpose of integral control is to eliminate offset. So you can understand this when you look at this equation. In integral control, there is a, there is a, this is the formula. The output of the integral control is proportional to time integral of error. This, this is integral sign. This is error. So, so it is not just the value of the error which matters. It, it depends on the duration, that how long is the uh, deviation remaining. That also matters in the case of this. So the, the issue is that even a small deviation can produce a very large output if it persists for a long time. Even a constant error will produce uh, increasing um, outputs. There is another way to write the same integral control, which is du by dt is k by e. That means you differentiate this part. You differentiate this equation. This equation, if you differentiate both sides, you will get this one. So here it says rate of change in the output. du by dt is rate of change in the output depends on the value of error. So if you have a small error, it means output will change slowly. If I have a large error, then the output will change fast. So, so in integral control, error doesn't, con uh, doesn't influence the value of the output, but it influences how fast output is changing, how fast is the correction taking place. So this way of looking at the equation also gives you a, uh, an idea of how integral control eliminates uh, offset. So there are two ways to write integral control. Both mean the same thing. One is to show it as an integration of error. Other to show that offset can be eliminated. You can see this equation. So you, if you want to have a comparison, so proportional output, how does it change over time? This is time and this is deviation. So what this means is that there is an increase in deviation and then the deviation is coming down. This is this kind of uh, change can be simulated. Like you, suppose I just change the set point and then I bring it down. I change the set point, then I again bring it down like this. You will get a deviation this way. So when the deviation is changing, proportional output will only change the same way because Proportional output depends on value of the deviation. So in this example, value of the deviation is this value, height. The deviation is increasing, height is increasing. In the same fashion, the output of the controller also will increase. So when deviation is zero, I get zero output here. When the deviation is maximum, I get maximum output here. And when the deviation starts reducing, output also reduces. And finally, if the deviation is zero, error is zero, then output is also zero. So in the in the case of in the case of uh, proportional control, zero error always means zero output. But if you compare this with integral control, it, it is something different.
in integral control what matters is the time integration of the area of, of the error graphically it means area under the curve so integral output is this is the deviation deviation is rising but if you see the graph here it is not rising the same way because what is what is important is the area not the actual height so area keeps on increasing so the output also keeps increasing and then at this point deviation is actually coming down but even though the deviation is coming down area keeps on increasing since the area keeps on increasing the output of the control will only increase and finally you will see a situation that even when the error has been brought to zero output this much of output is still there so it is possible for an integral control to maintain an output even when the error is brought to zero zero error condition means offset is zero i want 85 degrees i i got 85 but the controller will still maintain an output which will keep your three way valve open so it is integral control is capable of generating an output value even when there are become zero so when will the output of this come down when will this output start coming down that will happen if the deviation goes on the other side so the deviation goes to this side then this value will start coming so once again to repeat the main difference is proportional control zero error means zero output integral control zero error does not mean zero output it is capable of maintaining output even with zero error now what happens in uh, steady state condition you imagine the boiler is under steady load which means steam flowing out will be equal to the water coming in and the water level will be constant the formula for integral output is rate of change of output is equal to ki into e and in the case of boiler water feed control output is the opening of the valve feed valve opening is output so if you see if the feed water flow is steady then the feed valve position will be fixed if the feed valve position is fixed feed valve position is this one output so this this is the out output is the opening of the feed valve if the feed valve position is fixed it means there will be no change in the position if there is no change it means this value will be zero du by dt means rate of change in the valve position the so valve is not moving it means rate of change is zero so if if left hand side is zero here in the equation then on the right hand side also it should be zero and ki cannot be zero which means error has to be zero so the inference will be the understanding will be if i the only only time steady state will be achieved is when the error is brought to zero if error is brought to zero you don't get offset so so this is the advantage of looking at integral control in this form by differentiating the output on uh, differentiating the equation both sides so on the left hand side you see the rate of change in output is proportional to the error and from that you can conclude that under every steady condition output has to be steady 
steady steady condition means the plant is running at steady uh, rpm engine is running at steady rpm or uh, uh, generator running at steady uh, kilowatt boiler is running at steady steam demand under all these conditions the rate of change in output will be zero also means error will be zero so this is the easy way to prove that whenever integral control is used offset will be brought to zero and remember offset is defined as steady state error it is it is not the deviation which happens as soon as you something as soon as something changes this also gives an example that that uh, why do people get irritated when you wait that if you if you go somewhere you go to a restaurant or go to an office go to anywhere and we know that if you ask for something it will not happen immediately so the so the situation is this is what i want like i go to a restaurant and i want something to eat they place the order and i have not got it yet right so this is the deviation i go and ask for one uh, masala dosa then desired value is masala dosa but what is given to you is nothing has come so this is a deviation and time is passing if your mind worked by proportional alone that means if i don't get what i want i will be irritated then whatever happens to you in the beginning as soon as you place the order the same thinking should remain but what happens to us is we start integrating the deviation that means we keep telling okay i have not got what i asked for one minute has passed two minutes has passed so it is like a product of masala dosa into time so even though that one masala dosa remains as a deviation there is no change in that the problem is time is passing and your mind starts integrating so what happens is it starts increasing like this so finally even if the what do you want is delivered it comes down then it doesn't mean your temper will come down because this much area still remains so very often this is what happens with people also that even if you get what you want but if you are made to wait for it then you you are not happy how will the restaurant make you happy they will not give you something else so something else means without asking for something you should get then the deviation is on the other side it goes on this side only then you will feel happy okay so remember automation is not uh, discovered by engineers it is there in in human life everywhere and these are all examples of that so how do you adjust integral time this is the way you adjust you can there are two ways one is ki ki is uh, integral gain but you can oh there is an error in this equation you should read ki equals k p divided by t i what is wrong so it should, it should read k i is k k p by t i so what is the meaning is k i is integral gain 
this is proportional gain. If you divide proportional gain by Ti, you get this value called integral gain. So there is this value which you can adjust called reset time or integral time. Just like proportional band, this is also on the uh, inverse side. So when the integral time is large, it means integral gain will be less. So what is the advantage of having a large gain? Then the zero error condition will be reached earlier. But if the gain is too high, again it will result in something. So any, any kind of hunting is very often because of uh, excessive uh, gain. It's one of the reasons. So what we have seen uh, till now is an example of what is proportional control and what is the issue with proportional control which is called uh, offset mainly and how integral control can be used to eliminate offset. We have not covered what is derivative control and we have not seen how proportional plus integral or proportional plus derivative or the uh, sum of all three which is called PAD how that is to be controlled how they are used, that is not seen. We will see it in the next class. Right? If you have doubts, I will take them now. Uh, we have sir. Uh, one participant, Vinod Kumar, he had a doubt in the slide number 12 uh, regarding offset. Uh, Vinod Kumar, you're online. Yep. Vinod Kumar, you can ask if you're online. So tell Vinod Kumar comes online. On the chat, uh, we have one question from uh, Monvis. He mm -hmm. says, uh, sir, why integral control is also uh, called as reset control? Because it... it uh, is he listening? I, don't I know. think so, sir. I think so. Those who want can uh, unmute your mic and please come on like this. Yeah, those, those who want to ask questions, you can unmute and ask. So why is it called reset control? Is because it got... If I, if I change the set point, if I change the set point, then I'm able to bring the value where I want. Hello. Yeah, Vinod Kumar, mic is on, so he can speak. This is this is called resetting. I'm changing the set point to another value. And I brought the water level where I wanted, but this is without integral control. Integral control will allow you to do this without changing the set point. So even with the same set point, you will be able to achieve what you want. That is the reason. It is it is it is it is similar to resetting, changing the set point. But the correct term is integral control. Vinod Kumar, uh, are you online? Yes, Vinod Kumar, we can hear you. Your, your doubt is about which slide? 
स्लाइड नंबर ट्वेल्व सर स्लाइड नंबर ट्वेल्व ओके सर आई आई गिवन द परमिशन फॉर ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू अनम्यूट ऑल दोस्ट हैव गॉट डाउट्स यू कैन प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ एंड देन प्लीज आस्क अ क्वेश्चन Yes, please uh, state your name and then ask your doubt, please. Uh, sir, Vishal here. Yeah, hi. Good morning, Vishal. Go ahead. Uh, sir, my question is: Can we alone use integral control in a system? Uh, because as the as the deviation has become zero, still the rate in which the controller is uh, controlling the system is still high. Uh, we have Vishal. You got his question. Vishal, can you come back with a question uh, and speak a little loudly? It's also put on chat. Uh, sir, right. can we uh, can we allow can we use integral system alone in a uh, control system to control the variables? Uh, VRB sir, can you hear the doubts? I am answering the doubt. Can you hear now? Who's muted? Yes, sir. Can hear. Can hear. Yeah. Uh, so we shall. The, the answer to the question is: Integral control can be used alone. The issue with that is. it takes time to build up outputs because it is a it is it is time dependent it is an integration of error over time so initial output of integral control will be always very low if you look at uh, this graph where you are comparing if you see initial output of integral control will be always very less so the problem with using integral control alone is that Large deviations will build up, like your water level will go down quite a bit before the correction uh, starts. So it is not used alone, even though there is no prohibition. Uh, using it alone will result in uh, large deviations building up first. So most common combination is P plus I. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Any other sir? questions, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Ram Krishnan Anamalai. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. We'll bring back the same old memories when you were teaching. Yes, sir. The acting governor Sandal, you will be taking in the advanced second level, correct, sir? Please. Uh, probably yes, because the, the second part uh, I will be touching on uh, uh, derivative control and then all. Together, and then we'll move on to cascade control. The owner in detail uh, may not be in the next class, but we'll touch up on that. Sir, did you hear me? We would like yes, to sir, we hear you, sir. Uh, keep it in mind for explaining. for some time on governors also so it will be very helpful a uh, class only on governor yes, sir uh, like uh, the, all these settings and all speed roof uh, hunting the practical difficulties also like yes sir no governor itself is a big topic so, <laughs> yes sir yes sir uh, janaka sir is uh, has done a specialist also i know no i i can uh, take it we can do it as a separate class later fine sir fine sir fine sir yes sir okay
Sir, one more participant has raised his hand, sir. Jay Thakkar. Yeah, please go ahead. Thakkar, please ask your uh, question. Seems he is inaudible. Jay, can you hear us? Please ask your question. No, sir, I guess we lost him. Sir, excuse me. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, state Sorry, your name uh, and go ahead. Okay, I'm Ishaq. I, can, uh, I got a doubt uh, regarding the proportional control. The steady state offset is due to uh, band, right? Due to? Due to the proportional band. Or no, 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 no. no. It, it is in. No, no. If you look at the equation, it is very simple. It says. Output is equal to Ki and deviation. Proportional, proportional. Proportional control, the equation is output into e. done. If you go to the, this is the formula, it says here, output is equal to Kp into deviation. So if I turn the deviation to zero, output also will become zero. So it's kind of application where output needs to be maintained, deviation also needs to maintain. A simple example will be a, a like a float operated one. Like you've got a, got a tank with a float, and the float is connected to a valve like this with a fulcrum, okay? Like here, there is a fulcrum. Then let us say this is your uh, desired value. This is where you want the water level to be. If the float goes down, only then the valve can open. If, if water flows out of the tank more and more, you need to open the valve also more and more to maintain the same level. You agree? Yes. Yes. Then how will the valve open more. If you look at the diagram, you can make out how will the valve open more. So we have to adjust the fulcrum. Only if the float goes down more. The float has to go down and, and the float has to stay down. Only then the valve will open more. Like this. So if you want more output, more deviation will come in proportional control. So that is unavoidable in proportional control. It has got nothing to do with the fact of the uh, band. But if you reduce the band, offset will reduce. But we can't make the band zero, right, sir? It will be inherent in the system, actually. Band no. will be inherent in the system. Math mathematically, you just look at this, uh, even with the even when the uh, error is zero, right? What is, the, what is the largest possible value of Kp? Anything can be but Mathematically, what is the largest possible value? Right. Infinity, right? Sorry? What did you learn in school? Infinity multiplied by zero is how much? Zero by one. Zero, sir. Zero, uh, one. So, one. No, zero. at least the time we all learned, we were taught infinity multiplied by zero is zero. Zero is more powerful than infinity. So, so what, what this says is that, I mean, output of infinity is not possible. Gain, out, it cannot be infinity. But even if I increase the gain to very large value, the moment error is zero, output becomes zero. So in, in any controller where output has to be maintained and if I have only proportional control, then even with a very large value here, if this becomes zero, this becomes zero. That is a problem. It is, it is not a defect in the proportional control, but that is the way proportional control works. So even if you increase the gain to maximum, 
or even if you reduce the uh, band to minimum, you will still get offset and you will get a lot of hunting. So there are only two ways to handle it. Either you reduce the offset by this uh, other point which you said, or you introduce integral control, eliminate the offset. Is it uh, clear? Oh, okay, sir. thank you. Okay. Uh, sir, Jay Thakkar had, had a doubt, sir. Uh, his question is, uh, we use PI controller and PD controller, so can we use only ID controller? No. IND is not used. Because you'll still have the same problem of initial output will be very poor. So, so you have combination of, this part we'll take up in the next class, but we have combination of P plus I, P plus D, and you'll have uh, PID.